Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is going to be the first video of a series of how I take my 3D prints from this plain filament to this. So how I fully print my 3D models, uh, you can see here, he's a little tall, <laughs> but how I actually fully paint them, all the techniques I use, and I'm gonna go through it step by step. So today's video is going to be specifically talking about how I prime my models with paint. Uh, the other videos in this series will be uh, just how I get my base colors and color blocking done and how I also water down my paints. Uh, the watering process and how I get these really cheap paints to work really well like expensive paints. Then I'm also going to be talking about ink washes and how to make your own ink washes. Then the last part will be talking about dry brush techniques and how I'll dry brush it to get certain textures to pop out of this model. So I'm going to do all of these things with this so you can follow along and see how I take this Hulk bust and turn it into this. So first off, if you're wondering where I got this model, um, this is from Eastman. Um, you can see Eastman. He is a fantastic 3D modeler that creates prints for, uh, or creates models for 3D printing. Um, a lot of my busts that I have done in the past are from Eastman. Um, I highly recommend him. He's got a lot of free stuff available, and he's also got a Patreon, which I'm a part of, and I highly recommend it. So you can see here, this is the Hulk bust and we are ready to get started. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I usually do is I will overlook my model and make sure that there is not any zits or any kind of goobers or anything like hanging off that might be nasty on it. Um, like this, I actually had some stringing and some fuzziness on it and you might be able to see it, but Basically, I'm just going to I go over really well and make sure this was a very nice and clean print. I actually uh, printed this uh, on my Ender 3 and it did show a lot of layer lines at the at the end of it. And you can kind of see that. But sometimes with 3D printing, you just can't get rid of that stuff. But in the very beginning, like on the chest, it turned out crazy smooth. And I cannot wait to see all of the details start to come out of this because you can see his pores and veins and things like that. So after I'm done looking it over and I'm cleaning up my model, like I might take some sandpaper to it. Uh, and the sandpaper I typically use, if I have to use any, which is very rare, is I will use some 320 grit sandpaper, or I will actually use some 220 grits to sandpaper. And the only warning I will give you is when you have a model like this where the skin texture is like, you it's very noticeable, the more you sand, the, the less detail you're going to have. You're gonna be taking away detail. So the one area I actually do have some weirdness here is on this edge. So I will actually take a little bit of my sandpaper uh, and I never just use a full sheet. I actually like to cut it off into little squares. So I got a little square here. That way it's manageable. And then I will just take it and that way I can actually just grab it on the tip of my finger right there and just do a light sand. So that actually, just doing that took care of that weird edge. Sometimes it doesn't take much. And when I say doing a light sand, you don't. I really don't do much more than that when it comes to my busts um, because I just rely on having really good printer settings and trying to get the best looking model possible. Um, but sometimes you might see a little bit of weird spots and things like his ears get a little rough spot right there. And I'll kind of just mess with that a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Like this was actually, I'm very happy with how this model turned out. So 
Then I'll actually do the same thing on the bus or on the stand on all parts of the model and just look it over. This The stand turned out really well and I have no complaints and it's going to have some really cool like rebar and concrete. So I'll probably be doing a little bit different things to this one to get some cool textures to come out. So when it comes to priming, um, there are a few ways you can do this. You can either do this with a spray can, which with my bigger busts, I almost always use a spray can. Or you can use a airbrush. And the airbrush primer that I always use that I highly recommend is the Vallejo primer. Um, it's just a surface primer. I use the gray. And this stuff lasts a long time. I got, I've had this for about a year and I got a half a bottle. Um, because it goes on really well and I'm never having to fill my airbrush well more than once to, fit, to paint stuff. But for something like this, I might have to do it twice. That's why I only use this for minis. I never really use it for busts. Uh, the only time I'll use it for a bust is if maybe I want to do the face. Well, he's all green, so he's not going to have really a skin tone. So if I'm priming it in black, I'll actually mask it off and then just prime the face. Um, I did a gambit model that, or bust, that where I did that exact thing. And here's some pictures so you can see to where you can see how I actually masked it off and the face is a different color. So that is if you're using an airbrush. And you notice these cans of spray paint behind Hulk here. There are certain types that I will use. Um, Rust-Oleum is honestly my favorite type of spray paint. Um, I just think they are, for being able to get them just about anywhere, it's a really good quality. So the first one that I recommend is the filler and sandable primer. This is really good if you have a lot of cleanup to do on your model, like, it, and say that there are a ton of lines. Like, I'm not so, like, upset about the layer lines in his face that you can see there. So I'm not going to be using this. So this is really good for big surfaces where you want it to look really nice and you want to sand it down and get it looking like glass. For the most part, what I use is the... The 2X Ultra Cover Primer, and it comes in three main colors, um, white, gray, and black. And this is the stuff that I use exclusively uh, when it comes to busts. I almost always use this stuff because it only takes about one, one to one and a half light coats um, to be able to get it really well. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using this today and probably I'm going to be using the black for him and getting him looking really nice. I like the flat black. Uh, if you use gloss, a glossy primer, I do not recommend it um, because what we're going to do is be painting on top of him. And the main reason why I don't just take my paints and start directly painting onto him when you're giving a primer coat on your models, on the PLA plastic, ABS, or any other type of filament, sometimes you can run the risk of it will not stick to your print as well. So when you prime it, it actually gives a nice layer for your paints to stick to. So there are a lot of times when I'm done, you never even see the primer. Um, sometimes when I use black, I'll actually use that black to wear the shading so I won't fully paint in different areas. But for this one, I'm probably going to be covering the whole thing and end up airbrushing him or hand brushing him uh, all green so you won't even see the black. So right now I'm going to jump over into my garage and I'm going to go ahead and paint this guy with the flat black and then I will show you the final results. A few other things to mention is when you're spray painting your busts, there are a lot of weird nook and crannies, like so his brow is going to be a little difficult underneath the chin. Um, in the back here, some of the hair fibers might be a little bit difficult. The main thing is when you're attempting this, you do short bursts. You don't just hold it down in one spot and try to fill in all the cracks. You want to just do short bursts and just keep kind of fanning your 
your model. You're not going to get the entire thing perfect on the first pass. And I think that is the most important thing to keep in mind. You don't want to because that means you've been hosing in different areas that you didn't need to. So what I'm going to be doing is this will probably take a couple passes, but it will only be one coat of paint. Um, but we're going to go ahead and I will show you that process in the garage now. Okay, so I've got him ready to go, and I've also got the base ready as well. Uh, I am probably just going to set these apart a little bit because I know they're not going to be perfect the first time I hit them because I'm going to try to get the top as good as I can, and then I know I'm going to have to do another one like this and to try to get the bottom and everything because I'm going to paint the sides, but I still want the primer on there so the paint adheres to it really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this pass. And I'm just doing light coats until I cover it really well. And the key is I don't want it to glob up. I don't want too much spray paint in one area to where it starts to drip down. So I kept trying to go around it and try to get all the different angles that I could to get it as good as I can. So the big thing, like I said, don't try to get everything in the first pass. That is the key to getting a really good prime coat is taking your time and doing multiple passes. Like this, I feel like I got a really good job at this, but we'll come back to this after it's dried and I'll give you some close-ups to see where I missed. And then I'm gonna flip it over and get the bottom and any other spots that I might have missed. Okay, so it's all nice and dry. And looking at it, you can kind of see under the brow. Let's see if you can get a little closer here. You can see under the chin and under the brow, I definitely missed some, which is just perfectly fine, like I said. Um, and some, I missed some right here. The edges, the top of the shoulder I missed. I and mean, you can see some in the hair right there. So I am going to definitely have to just kind of place this on its side, and then I'm gonna get those angles. So I might actually just set him on his back and try to get everything on his front first. And then I'll put him on his uh, face to be able to get the bottom here. But uh, that is the first pass. So if you get something looking like this, you did a pretty good job. But like I said, I'm gonna keep saying it over and over. Don't try to get everything on your first pass. That's how you can get a perfect primed coat. Uh, and you can kind of see how some of the layer lines are starting to show through a little bit. And that's just kind of what, ha what you get with 3D printing. But I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the rest of this now. And I also did the base and you can see there are some little areas here and there. So I might actually be angling this and trying to just get the different sides. Uh, but for the most part, it came out pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna let that dry and uh, then I'll come back to it and we'll see what it looks like after that. Now you can see that I've gotten all of the paint on him good. That's a good prime coat on the hair and the face. The chest is good now. Uh, I just have a little bit back here and underneath the hair as you can see right there. So up underneath. So I'm going to flip him over and do the third round, uh, which is still the first real coat.
So I also flipped the base over and I'll get that as well. So that should be the last bit that I need to add. And uh, I'll let this dry, come back to it in a bit, and we'll look at the finished results. All right, so here's the final result of the primed Hulk. Uh, it turned out really well. Uh, it was probably about a coat and a half um, when, when all said and done. But this is the first video of the 3D printing painting basics. So be sure to check out the next video in this series where I'm going to be talking about how I thin my paints and how to color block. And once again, thanks a lot for watching and please don't forget to hit subscribe and to support the channel and I'd really appreciate it. And that wraps up this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Other than that, I just hope you have a great day. Bye.